Hello, dear chess students. This is an international master, Alex Kondin. And according to your request, I'm conducting this video regarding evaluation uh, at different stages of the chess game. So, uh, what I want to show you for this lesson is two games of mine against Valiaho Pons, who is now a strong grandmaster, and a second game which is also was conducted against a strong grandmaster currently. So let's start with this game against Valiaho uh, from 1999, uh, World Championship under 18. So Valiaho was white, I was black. This is theory so far, so no comments. However, here I think this should be our first critical evaluation position. If we want to learn how to better evaluate different uh, chess positions, uh, we need to factor in various uh, factors, such as material, uh, positional, tactical, and other uh, stuff, weaknesses of course, pawn structure, etc. So let's do it step by step. So first of all, it's obvious that black is a pawn up, right? Uh, however, white has a significant advantage in development, and also black's, um, frankly, both flanks, but especially his kingside flank, is quite weakened. I mean, even if the black castle soon, which looks uh, quite unlikely currently, still his king will probably be weak until the end of the game uh, due to h4, etc. or a4 on this uh, queen side, etc. So that's why this is a well known theoretical uh, line where white basically gets. A strong compensation for the sacrificed pawn and frankly I prefer playing white here. I was crushed a few times playing black um, by decent opponents uh, but still I was crushed and uh, so what happens in terms of tactics here? Well nothing uh, interesting so far uh, but it will be interesting within a few moves when white completes its development. And in terms of pawn structure uh, we already discussed it. Um, so let's continue. Knight bd7, I think the more standard moves are bishop b7 or bishop b4. Knight bd7 uh, allowed white to play d5 which was an interesting move. Uh, though I'm not sure it, it's the strongest. So this is our second evaluation position and uh, according to the theme of this video uh, our goal is to improve our evaluation ability and not to delve inside uh, various tactical moments that uh, occurred in this or any other game that I'll show you. So we are just focusing on how to evaluate position as good as we can and according to that we can uh, devise a plan, uh, hopefully. So what happens here? Um, the situation has slightly changed. Black still has an extra pawn, but now he also has a bishop spare. But now his uh, lack of development is even worse because, I mean, you cannot call this rook developed. And, uh, well, maybe you can call this queen developed, but uh, then again, once black takes, oh, sorry, white takes on d3, which will probably soon happen this queen will have to retreat, so uh, in my view black is 
very severely behind in development and also has some weaknesses. Of course, the D3 pawn, H, these pawns are quite weak as well, so I think it's quite obvious that unless black wants this game to end quickly with some sort of a checkmate or a just a strong direct attack versus its king, he needs to swap as many pieces as possible and as quickly as possible, and mainly uh, queens, of course. And then, uh, if black is able to reach the endgame, then maybe his bishop's pair uh, can play a serious role, uh, and he can at least reach equality. So, in that in mind, I've played here the correct move of bishop g7, and not bishop e6 trying to retain this extra pawn on, on d3, which after knight d4 is already a, a very bad position for black. And in my view, black will not survive beyond the move 30 here. So, it's just, you know, you, you, you just can't play with your king... Uh, uh, stand here for a long time against 2519, which was the elo of Valihao at that time. So, so bishop g7 is the correct move. Uh, basically, uh, giving back this pawn uh, in exchange for the opportunity to sw swap queens and enter the endgame. So, rook takes d3. Now, of course, take, takes here. This looks extremely dangerous because, uh, well, it's quite obvious. Uh, black should swap uh, as many pieces as possible, uh, being behind in development, especially queens. So, and here, suddenly, the situation has changed once again. So please evaluate this position. Okay, so what do we have here? Materialistically, obviously that's an even position now. Uh, Black does have his strong bishop spare. However, he's still behind in development. So all in all, it's an equal position. Um, of course, white cannot take on b5 due to bishop a6, and, and that was the reason of black's last last move to remove the king from from the check on e1, and also to uh, disallow white uh, to cause some problems to black's king after, let's say, bishop d6 or whatever. Black just wants to put his king on g7, and then it will be an equal position. Uh, so. What would you do here if you were white? Actually, many moves are possible, but probably the best moves are something like bishop e5 or maybe a b3 with an equal position. However, Valhiao well, decided to play a, an interesting but doubtful move decided to take this pawn and basically to sacrifice a, an exchange for one pawn and some initiative. However, it's insufficient. Uh, white's compensation for the exchange is insufficient and black is slightly better. So it would be better for him to just continue playing the way uh, for, for an equality. But it was the last game of uh, the tournament for chess championship uh, under 18 in Oropesa del Mar, which is Spain, Vallejo, uh, home's country, and maybe he had some uh, pressure on him to try and score a, a victory in this last game, maybe to achieve some medal or whatever. We were relatively at the top of the tournament uh, at this point. So, so here, a small mistake by black, this was better, and then 
there is a pressure on h5 pawn so g4 later could be a strong idea and i played rook d5 instantly instead of gain, giving a check on d1, d1 first so here g4 uh, was the right move and black was still slightly better And here another mistake. Rook takes a2. It's a mistake. The right move was rook c2 with slight advantage for black. Now after taking there, uh, basically if Valiha would have founded the not very difficult move of rook d6, he would have won this game quite quickly. And uh, but we both were here already at time trouble, so uh, mistakes happen frequently. This is a mistake also. Now try to evaluate this position once again. This is the last evaluation quiz for this game. What would you how would you evaluate the position? What would you do if you were black? Now it it may be a bit counterintuitive the solution, but if you analyze the position correctly and evaluate it as you should, then you can quite easily come up with the solution. Now what do we have here? Materialistically, um, black has an exchange up uh, for one pawn. Um, now black's pieces are not very well coordinated. Now uh, his rook on a2 and rook on g8 they don't coordinate very well. The bishop on d5 is good, but this rook is sorry. This rook on g8 is quite terrible. I mean, he does nothing. Um, so it's easy to see that white uh, has a strong compensation for the exchange with good pieces here and a good coordination and also a strong advanced h5 pawn which could become very dangerous quite quickly so all in all it looks like the position is uh, more or less equal um, however if you evaluated this position correctly just like we did you could find this move of bishop e6 basically cutting out this uh, rook uh, on this uh, uh, king's flank and here uh, suddenly white's communication lines be be basically begin to suffer as well so it bishop e6 disrupts white's communication as well and black is slightly better here this is the line and g4 of course a very important move you remember this weak rook on g8 so we now enter it into the game and black is slightly better now compare this position where now black has good pieces coordinating compare it with what happened during the game during the time trouble I took this pawn which was a mistake because it was much more important to cut out the white's rook and here after rook c6 white is again significantly better and now h6 is a threat many threats so now another terrible move due to time trouble this was the right move and after h6 white is significantly better however I played bishop c2 in this time trouble and this loses instantly and here maybe you could find the right move for white okay so this was winning instantly by force and that's it black has to surrender because he's getting checkmated or, or he loses his <laughs> entire army 
However, uh, Valien was also in time trouble, so he couldn't find this as well. Things like that happen frequently, even to very strong players, when they are stressed in the last round, after a Tarian tournament, during a time trouble, so... He opted for this option, and now he was only significantly better, and within something like 20 moves, he would still be able to beat me. But that's not very interesting to our theme of this video, which is evaluating positions. And this is the second game that I wanted to show you. Uh, it was played in a European Youth Championship under 18, Little Horror, Greece, also 1999, and was black against a young promising player Anton Korobov. Right now he's something like 26-60. He was slightly weaker at that time. So let's see. Standard Moran variation, nothing interesting so far. So this is just standard plane, nothing special. Both players develop their pieces reasonably logically and we have reached this key position which I'd like you to evaluate. What would you think uh, this position uh, has its inside? So materialistically obviously we are even. Uh, in terms of pawn structure it's easy to see that both sides have good pawn structures and it's relatively equal, uh, more or less. Um, in terms of dynamics, well, both sides have successfully finished their development and um, all of their pieces are quite well placed, coordinated, etc. So, due to all of these factors, it's quite easy to see that the position is basically equal. And uh, since the position is equal, there is no room for abrupt and uh, blatant uh, uh, aggressive attempts to, to crush each other. So, why should I have continued playing something reasonable like a 4 or a King G2, something, you know, just pl just solid, stable moves with a roughly equal position. However, White has significantly overestimated itself due to probably a wrong evaluation or, or being over-aggressive. But I think it stems from a wrong evaluation. So, he played Knight D5. Queen b8. Now the best move for white was to retreat to c3, which is easy for a computer to do, but very difficult for a human being just to retreat where you just were. And move a go, so he decides to continue with his unjustified assault, knight b6. And uh, during the game, I, I realized that. This this uh, unprovoked uh, knight voyage should be good for black, not for white. Uh, the knight is probably stuck there, and there were absolutely no reasons for black to be worse. So usually these aggressions, unjustif when unjustified, they lead uh, to other sides getting the advantage. And that's what happened in this game. Rook c d8, and black is already slightly better. White should have played here a4, trying to uh, basically 
save his knight via a5 and but he played f4 continue his unprovoked and uh, unjustified assault missing this move bishop c7 it's not a very difficult move but still now uh, white is the one having to find ways to save this game now it took with the rook and taken with the bishop was slightly better you'll see soon realize why I took here and what would you do here if you were white I know it's a bit tricky question but still well e6 ruining black spawn structure as well was the best move and uh, after that black is only slightly better however however Anton Korobov took on c6 maybe he wasn't feeling so well at this day on this day sorry so here black is already significantly better and uh, although white definitely could have defended better uh, the game quickly ended within a few moves and Anton surrendered if I recall correctly indeed he wasn't feeling well on this day but still I think uh, uh, it took him only 12 moves to lose this absolutely equal position due to a very very wrong assessment and uh, overest overestimation of his uh, position here and just wrong evaluation so uh, that's it for me for today it was international master Alex Kundin for all of you dear chess students uh, on this video of uh, how to evaluate positions correctly thank you very much for your attention and time